An 80,000-ton behemoth of steel cuts through the waves. On its deck, a new generation of fighter jets is launched not by a ramp, but by powerful electromagnetic catapults, a technology the United States once had all to itself. This is the Fujian, China's newest and most advanced aircraft carrier, and it's more than just a ship. It's a statement, a declaration that Beijing is ready to project its power across the world's oceans. For decades, the aircraft carrier has been the undisputed queen of the seas, a symbol of a nation's military might. China has poured immense resources into building a carrier fleet to rival the world's best. Its third carrier, the Fujian, is expected to be commissioned and enter service in 2025. This ship, along with its sister carriers, the Liaoning and Shandong, forms the heart of a new blue water navy designed to challenge the old order. But what if this symbol of ultimate power is already sailing toward obsolescence? What if the linchpin of China's global ambition is fundamentally vulnerable to a weapon it helped pioneer? Because as China's carriers learn to rule the waves, a new threat is screaming through the upper atmosphere at over five times the speed of sound. A threat that can maneuver and strike with almost no warning. This is the era of the hypersonic missile, and it changes everything. The very weapons China perfected to threaten American naval dominance are now being turned back against them. And it begs the question, in a world of unstoppable missiles, can China's multi-billion dollar aircraft carriers actually survive? To understand what's at stake, you have to get what these carriers represent. They are the realization of a decades-long dream for the PLA Navy. For years, China's Navy was basically a coastal defense force, but its ambitions have ballooned with its economy. To be a true global power, you need a blue water navy, and the centerpiece of any blue water navy is the aircraft carrier. It started with the Liaoning, a refurbished Soviet-era carrier that served as a training platform. Then came the Shandong, its first domestically built carrier, which was an improvement on the old design. Both of these use a ski jump ramp, a reliable, but limiting, technology that restricts the weight and fuel of the aircraft they can launch. But the Fujian is a different beast entirely. It's a supercarrier, with a displacement of over 80,000 tons, it rivals the size of America's Nimitz-class carriers. And crucially, it uses an electromagnetic launch system, or EMLs. This tech lets the Fujian launch heavier, more heavily armed aircraft, and do it faster. State media has even bragged about its ability to conduct deck load strikes, mass swarm attacks designed to overwhelm enemy defenses with sheer numbers. This isn't just an upgrade, it's a generational leap. It's meant to give China a decisive edge and project power far from its shores, potentially positioning a three-carrier force hundreds of kilometers east of Taiwan. These ships are the floating, sovereign heart of China's anti-access, area denial, or A2, AD, strategy. They're designed to push foreign navies, particularly the US Navy, further and further out into the Pacific, creating a buffer zone where China calls the shots. Each carrier is protected by a sophisticated, multi-layered defense system. This includes an outer ring patrolled by submarines and J-15 fighters, a middle zone covered by advanced Type 055 destroyers, and an inner point defense zone with close-in weapons systems. In theory, this bubble of protection makes them a fortress at sea. But this fortress was designed for yesterday's war. Enter the hypersonic missile, traveling at speeds above Mach 5, that's over 6,000 kilometers per hour. These weapons aren't just fast, they're unpredictable. Unlike a classic ballistic missile that follows a predictable arc like a cannonball, a hypersonic glide vehicle can be released at high altitude and then maneuver, making sharp turns on its way to the target. This mix of extreme speed and maneuverability is what makes them terrifying for naval planners. A modern carrier strike group's defenses are layered and sophisticated, built to intercept subsonic cruise missiles, fighter jets, and even some ballistic missiles. But they all rely on one crucial thing. Time. Time to detect the threat, time to track it, time to launch an interceptor, and time for that interceptor to get to its target. Hypersonic weapons shrink that window from minutes to mere seconds. A missile spotted 160 kilometers away might give defenders just a minute to react. Chinese researchers claim their YJ-21 hypersonic missile, which can allegedly hit terminal speeds of Mach 10, could fly under a carrier group's radar until it's just 50 kilometers away. 
At that range, impact is all but guaranteed. For years, the Pentagon has been grappling with the threat from China's own hypersonic arsenal, specifically missiles like the DF-17 and the ship-launched YJ-21 Eagle Strike. The YJ-21, in particular, is designed as a carrier killer, a weapon capable of taking out the most valuable ship in an enemy's navy from as far as 1,500 kilometers away. Concerns are so high that some U.S. officials have warned a volley of these could neutralize American carriers in the first few minutes of a conflict. But here's the great irony. The same physics that makes a U.S. carrier vulnerable to a Chinese hypersonic missile makes a Chinese carrier just as vulnerable to an American one. The United States, after lagging for a bit, is catching up fast. The U.S. Army is on track to deploy its Dark Eagle long-range hypersonic weapon in 2025, a system with a reported range of nearly 2,800 kilometers. At the same time, the U.S. Navy is developing its own sea-launched version, known as Conventional Prompt Strike, and plans to field it on Zumwalt-class destroyers by 2025 and on Virginia-class submarines after that. The shield China has so carefully built around its carriers, the destroyers, the fighters, the radars, wasn't built for this. A Type 055 destroyer's advanced radar is formidable against conventional threats, but against something moving at Mach 5 or faster, it's just not enough. The kill chain, the whole process of detecting, tracking, targeting, and firing, is shattered by pure speed. The age of the untouchable naval fortress might be over. So, if a hypersonic missile is fired at a Chinese carrier group, what can they do? Is survival even on the table? The answer lies in a frantic, high-stakes race between offense and defense that's happening right now in military labs across the globe. The first line of defense is simple, don't get hit. This means trying to intercept the missile. But this is where the trouble begins. Standard missile interceptors, like the American SM-6, are being upgraded to take on hypersonic threats, but it's a huge challenge. You're essentially trying to hit a maneuvering bullet with another bullet. In March and May of 2025, the U.S. Missile Defense Agency ran tests showing its systems, using space-based sensors like the Hypersonic and Ballistic Tracking Space Sensor HBTSS, could detect and simulate an engagement against a maneuvering hypersonic target. This is progress, but a simulated fight isn't the same as a real-world kill. Both the U.S. and China are therefore pouring money into next-generation defensive tech. The most promising are directed energy weapons, basically, lasers. In theory, a powerful laser could zap an incoming missile at the speed of light, offering an almost instant defense. The trick is generating enough power and holding the beam steady on a target moving at thousands of meters per second. Another idea is the railgun, which uses electromagnetic energy to fire a projectile at hypersonic speeds. These aren't science fiction anymore, but they aren't ready to be a reliable shield just yet. If you can't shoot the missile down, the next best thing is to break its kill chain. A hypersonic missile is only as good as the targeting data it gets. This means the attacker needs a network of satellites, drones, and radars to find the carrier, track it, and guide the missile in. The defensive strategy, then, is to blind the archer before they can even fire the arrow. This involves electronic warfare to jam the enemy's sensors and communications, cyber attacks to cripple their networks, and even physically targeting their satellites and spy drones. In a future conflict, the first shots fired might not be missiles at all, but a war of signals and code to control the information space. This new reality is also forcing a change in how navies think. The whole idea of packing immense power into a single, high-value asset like a supercarrier is getting riskier. Navies may shift to a more dispersed model, spreading out their forces to make them harder to target. We might see a rise in smaller lightning carriers, amphibious assault ships packed with F-35B jets, and a greater reliance on submarines and long-range unmanned drones that can provide strike power without putting a $13 billion carrier and its 5,000 crew members in harm's way. This technological arms race is redefining naval warfare right before our eyes. It's a complex chess match of moves and counter moves, where the strategic balance can flip with a single breakthrough. To keep up with these rapid developments in military tech and global strategy, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. It's the best way to support the channel and ensure you never miss an analysis.
So, let's go back to our big question. Can China's carriers survive in the hypersonic era? The honest answer is, it's profoundly uncertain. And that uncertainty hangs over every navy. China's new carriers, like the Fujian, are amazing feats of engineering, but they're sailing into a world where their own offensive breakthroughs have created a universal vulnerability. The physics of a Mach 10 missile doesn't care about the flag painted on its target. The defensive systems that exist today are likely not enough to stop a determined, massed hypersonic attack. While future technologies like lasers and better interceptors might one day offer a defense, they're not ready yet. For now, the advantage has swung dramatically to the missile. This doesn't mean the aircraft carrier is instantly obsolete, but its role is being fundamentally challenged. It can no longer sail with impunity as a fortress of power. Instead, it's a high-value, high-risk asset in a transparent and lethal battle space. China has built its dream fleet, centered on these powerful flagships. But in mastering the hypersonic missile to challenge its rivals, it may have accidentally created the very weapon that makes its own greatest assets terrifyingly vulnerable. The Queen of the Seas is no longer untouchable. The real question now is, what comes next?